congratulations! Class of 2018, you are hygienists, you did it. Boards are passed, graduation is done. This is it, this is what you've been working for, welcome. Uh, my name is Natalie Barton, I have been a dental hygienist now for 11 years. Uh, feels like I took my boards yesterday though, it's just, it's wild how fast your career is gonna go. So with that in mind, I'm gonna give you five tips today for the new hygienist. Okay, so tip number one, take care of yourself. Um, when I was in school, there was a lot of emphasis on, you know, sit, sit right, hold your instruments correctly, make sure you're getting massages weekly or at least twice a month. Um, you know, the, the stuff that you really need to do in order to make your career last. Um, I took it for granted and I want to make sure that none of you guys do the same thing. Your hands will not last forever. I've been doing this, like I said, 11 years now and I'm starting to get numbness in my hands. Um, I have a lot of pain in my neck, back and shoulders due to the work and I've worked about five days a week, most weeks uh, since I graduated and I don't recommend that either. <laughs> so if you can, you know, work three, maybe four days a week, but definitely don't do five if you can help it. I know you've got big bills to pay off, been there, um, but just be careful with your body. The other thing you need to remember is uh, to make sure that you are moving. I bought a Fitbit a couple years ago because I was like, why am I putting on weight? I'm moving, I'm exhausted at the end of the day, my feet hurt because you're pushing yourself around on your chair all day. Uh, I was moving, I think, 3,200 steps a day. <laughs> that was it. And I went, oh, well, that would explain it. So um, make sure you are working out a couple times a week. Get that blood moving. You are sitting a lot, more than you know. And as you will soon find out, hygienists and dental offices are notorious for having really good and sweet and high calorie foods in the back of the office. So watch out for that. <laughs> um, get your massages at least twice a month. Definitely, you know, nod with me. Yes, I will do this. I, I promise to get my massages. Good job. Um, so that's the first thing. Take really good care of yourself so you can last as a, as a dental hygienist. Okay, so tip number two for the new hygienist is your patients will lie to you on their health histories. Okay, not really on purpose. They just don't think you actually need to know what you need to know. Um, so it's more of omission versus lies, <laughs> but it, you end up with the same results. So make sure that when you're going over health histories with a patient, be specific in your wording. Uh, I ask my patients, how is your general health? And then I will say things like, have you been to the doctor lately? Have you been in hospitalized lately? Did you have surgery anytime since I saw you? Uh, I'll remind about flu, you know, in that. So their brain starts working because otherwise they're like, I feel good today. I got nothing to complain about. And they just had a hip replaced last week. This happened to me recently. And didn't feel they needed to tell you about that. So be specific. A lot of times when you ask patients how they're feeling, they're immediately going to talk about their teeth, um, which is normal, but make sure that's a separate question when you're going over health history. So I always say, okay, is there anything the doctor needs to look at as far as your teeth? Is, you know, are they, do you have any pain, anything going on there? And then I'll let them concentrate on that later. Uh, so health histories, watch it. Oh, also they don't consider supplements, medications. So remind them, birth, are you on birth control? Are you on a multivitamin? Are you taking calcium? Are you on garlic? Garlic thins the blood. We need to know if they're taking garlic supplements. Um, just, you know, be, be aware that a lot of the supplements people take, and everybody's on supplements, um, a lot of times they don't consider that they need to put that on the health history. Sometimes they just roll their eyes at me and go, oh, I'm on too many to even list. You don't need to know those. And I go, actually, I kind of do just, you know, list off what you remember, and I jot them all down on a sticky note, and I stick them in their chart later. Uh, so just be aware. They're not telling you the whole truth, typically. All right? Cool. Okay, so tip number three is create a pattern and stick to it with your cleanings. Um, when you first graduate, there's a lot of stuff you're trying to get done in an hour. And it's, you know, it's gonna take you a few weeks to even a couple of months to be able to do that. So what you wanna do is create a pattern so you can start getting into that habit much quicker. 
Um, I like to start with, of course, the health history, and then you're gonna do x-rays and probably a perio chart. That way when the doctor comes in, maybe even polish, that way the doctor comes in, they can see what they need to see, they've got all the information they need, and they're not waiting on you or having to come back. A lot of times, um, at least in the offices I've worked in, the dentist, sometimes you buzz them and they'll come, and sometimes you have to, you know, they kind of surprise you. They'll show up at random, uh, which is great. I don't mind getting interrupted. I think that's actually awesome because it helps me run on time but occasionally I don't have all their information ready for them. So I've learned, you know, make sure all of the information has been collected first. Then when you sit down to scale, if the doctor comes in, you just have to remember, okay, I was on number 22 and write out whatever their exam is, no big deal. It, it makes life much easier. You'll start going faster. When I clean, I always start with the lower anterior linguals because a lot of people get their tartar in that area. It bugs them the most. You get that clean, they're gonna be most satisfied with their cleaning right off the bat. They really think you did a good job just because you got that off. Then I work interproximal on the lowers and then I, you know, I just, I, I have like quadrants I work in. Um, but I always start lower front first because you get the most tartar there. You get the most fun taking it off there as well. And the patient's most satisfied with the cleaning because they're like, oh yeah, I can feel the difference. It feels, it feels clean now. Um, so those are the things I recommend for tip number three. All right, so tip number four, I debated this one for a while because there's a lot of things I'd like to tell you, but this one has really served me well over the last 11 years, and that is make your patients swish. And what I mean by that is um, a lot of people have cold sensitivity, and we're not allowed to run warm water through our bottles, which is a good idea because we don't want bacteria in there. Um, but you'll have a lot of patients come in that have a lot of cold sensitivity. So the way I get around it is I will spray the water kind of on the back of the cheek, uh, back in there, um, and I let them swish with it. It gives it a chance to kind of hit the tissue before it hits the teeth, warms it up, even just a couple degrees will make a big difference. Um, I've had a lot of people put, thank me for that, so I'm not spraying it directly on their teeth. Just remember, I write down in people's charts if I need to swish them or if they're just okay to have a regular rinse. It's a random tip but it's really helped out. All right, tip number five. Um, your best skill is you. Okay, what do I mean by that? So it's 2018, but we still have a lot of dental phobic patients. We're doing so much better. We're not raising up new generations with the kids that are growing up now. They're gonna be pretty good with the dentist. Uh, we've been, you know, we've been very careful with them the last 10 years, 15 years. It's, it's getting, you know, really good. But you're gonna find a lot of your older patients and a lot of your middle-aged patients still have a lot of dental phobia. So one of the best ways I've learned to deal with that is through distraction. So get really good at being distracting. And uh, what I typically do is I tend to be a storyteller. So I tell them about when my sisters and I were kids or I tell them about how I worked at summer camp and all the different crazy things we did there. Or I just, I find typically something they're interested in um, are they interested in animals? Are they interested in camping? Are they interested in, I live in Colorado. We talk about hiking 14ers. We talk about just, you know, whatever. Um, but find, some of my first questions to people when I meet them is, you know, what are your hobbies? And then I start going through the little files in my head and I go, okay, do I have any stories about that that I can tell this person? A lot of people like sports. I am horrible at sports, but I have some really funny stories about me being horrible at sports. So I can bring those out and it entertains them. It distracts them from realizing they're in the dental chair. And when they leave, they typically have a smile on their face, which is really fun. You are going to have those patients that come in that go, I hate the dentist. Why am I here? <laughs> and it's always on like a Monday when it's cloudy and gross and you're running behind and you're like, yeah, hate you too. But <laughs> you can't do that. So I make it a game. I try and turn it into, you know what, let me see if I can get this person cheerful by the time they leave. And a lot of times I win that game and it's a lot of fun. Um, Cause it's just, it's gonna be hard. You're gonna have a lot of hard days and you're gonna have a lot of really, and a lot of times realize if they're grumpy, probably because they're really scared. They've had some bad experiences. I have had some crazy stories from people of stuff they've gone through with dentists back in the day. Everything from getting duct taped to the chair <laughs> to uh, being slapped by the dentist as a kid, you know, just crazy stuff. And you'll hear those stories too. So, you know, nod, smile, apologize, and say, you know what, things are so much better now. Um, but yeah, learn how to be distracting. Other things you can do for anxious patients, um, I run essential oils in my office all the time now. And there are certain oils that I, I do pull out for the anxious patients uh, and I use webcams. 
um, pull out webcams. Webcams are fantastic. There are kitten cams, there are puppy cams, there's beach cams, there's, again, find out what the person's interested in, throw it up on the screen. They will be distracted. That's all, it's all about distraction. Get them in, get them out, you know, get them happy and um, do a good job. All right, that's number five. If you'd like to follow for more fun videos, I will be uploading dental hygiene videos on my YouTube channel. Um, and I do have a blog, which you can, or a newsletter, it's more of a newsletter, um, that you can check out on my website at www.meetnataliebarton.com backslash dental. Um, it's a hidden page on my website specifically for people in the dental field. Uh, sign up for the emails. There's one email a week and it usually includes funny stories of just things I have done or things I've learned, different tricks I use, uh, you know, the things you can do with charcoal in the dental office or just in health in general. Um, I've got all kinds of stuff on there. So be sure to subscribe to this channel and be sure to check out my newsletter. Have an awesome day, an awesome career, and congratulations again.